Hey everybody, it's Denise and I'm here at Nuddles to show you how to put together block number 10 of our block of the month this year. We're almost done and um, I, I, I'm i sure many of you are loving the videos. I've heard from a lot of you that you're loving the videos. I am missing you guys. That's what I'm going to say. I miss having you guys here in class. I miss having you here in the store. We are open so please come and see us um, but I really miss the interaction that I have with you guys while I'm teaching. So anyway, um, that won't be going away. So. But I, I do actually seriously hope that we'll be back live for class in the store next month. I'm, I'm fairly confident in that, although everything changes by the day. So we'll see. So here's our block. Um, it's the cat's cradle template that I've shown many of you before. I have new people joining every month, so it may be brand new for you. I hope that you'll reach out with, to me with questions if you have them. So cat's cradle template looks like this. I'm sure you can't see it too great on camera, but um, it's the one that I'm using today. You'll see it demonstrated a whole bunch. And here is our block. Um, the units are are quite simple to put together if you just go step by step, but it is a lot of seams to sew together when you put the whole thing together. So I, I think you're ready for the challenge. You've been doing this for 10 months, so I think you're ready for the challenge. Um, enjoy the block, enjoy the video. I look forward to seeing you all soon. And please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. Okay, let's get started. So here I have all of my fabric pre-cut that we need for today's block. Um, I'm gonna start with these guys. This is my fabric A, which is my background. I've got six that are four by five inch rectangles. These are gonna be used for my cornerstones. There's four of them and they're three and a half inch squares. Um, and then I have two strips that are two and a quarter inches wide of my background fabric. We're gonna use those babies first, okay? And then to go along with those, I have, this one is width of fabric. This is the one I'm gonna be using for the outer portion of my star, um, three and a quarter inches wide, and also three and a quarter inches wide. This is the B fabric that I'm using for the inner portion of the star. And this one doesn't need to be as long because we're not making an, as many of them. So in your kit, what you're going to do is you're going to get, the, the fabric will be this length in your kit if you're using a kit. Um, so you'll subcut off a strip that you can cut that one, the, the um, three and a half inch, excuse me, three and a quarter inch wide size, sorry, three and a quarter inches wide. And then this will be another strip and these guys are two and a half inch squares, okay? So that will all be one, this will be what the size of your strip looks like in your kit for those of you using a kit. From the B fabric, those of you using the kit, the B fabric, this one is going to look like this when you get it in your kit, okay? So you'll wanna get your, um, don't cut your strip down to two and a half inches wide because then it won't be wide enough to get your three and a quarter inch out of it. So what I would suggest you do for cutting when you get started with this is cut off four two and a half inch units first and then subcut those down to two and a half inch squares and then trim whatever's left. I know I, I left a length there for you, but just leave whatever's left of your strip and cut that down to the three and a quarter inch width so that we can get started. And then you'll have, um, You'll have a bunch of the two and a half inch squares that you'll use in the very last step, okay? So um, step number one of the sewing instructions is to take your two and a quarter inch A fabric, your two and a quarter inch background fabric, and sew it to your um, your B fabric and your C fabric. I think I misspoke. I, I meant to say that the, the darker one or the main one that you want to be the outer portion will be the B and then the, um, the smaller portion will be the C. So I apologize for that, B and C. Um, so you're gonna sew your two and a quarter inch wide A fabric to the B and then you'll also sew your two and a quarter inch wide A fabric to your C. And I understand this piece is longer. You're, you're more than welcome to cut that down or just sew the amount that we need here. I'm gonna sew these together to make my units, okay? Before I do that, I just wanna mention one thing and maybe it'll make a little bit more sense as we get going. 
if you were to follow the instructions for the ruler that I'm going to show you in a couple of minutes, it asks you to take squares and rectangles of fabric. So a two and a quarter inch square and a two and a quarter by three and a quarter inch rectangle. Notice those are the same widths as what we're using here. It asks you to pre-cut these squares and sew them together like that. Okay, I'm going to instead sew a strip of them and then subcut. I think it's more efficient if you're making more than, what are we making, 12 of these. If you were gonna make a whole quilt with this technique, you would definitely wanna go with the strip piecing method because it's a heck of a lot quicker and more efficient. So keep that in mind if you read the instructions and it tells you to start with these tiny little units and sew those together. I'm just kind of, um, you know, Denisifying it, I guess. I'm just making it a little bit more efficient for you guys because that's uh, what I like to do for you. So let's start by taking my A and B fabrics and sewing those right sides together. They're not exactly the same length and I don't want you to make them the same length. I just want to get a nice long strip. Um, this is definitely commonly how we see our fabrics. <clears throat> I am sewing with the uh, larger fabric on the bottom as a pretty general rule. I'm not going to pin this, although if you feel comfortable pinning, you're more than welcome to. So you'd put your pins in sideways so that you can easily pull them out without the sharp edges sticking out. Okay, so I'm just going to start up near the top. I'm not back stitching because I'm going to be cutting that off momentarily. And I'm just going to start stitching. Um, what we like to do when we sew like a lot of you maybe use jelly roll strips, two and a half inch wide strips that you just get long, narrow ones. What we like to do is we like to touch our fabric, right? That's like half the fun of all this. So what we like to do is maybe take your finger and put it in between and pet those fabrics as you're stitching. Well, all that petting and touching and, and grooming of your fabric makes it distort and stretch. And we don't wanna do that. So try to not do too much touching to the fabric. Just let it feed, let your sewing machine feed. Like I said, if you want to pin, then you can do that. But I just really let the machine feed the fabric and I kind of just guide it and steer and stop every so often to make sure that the, the pieces of fabric are lined up together. So I'm gonna do that. And you can watch me, I guess. And then since I already know that I'm gonna be doing the exact same thing from the piece that I have of my, um, B, uh, A and C fabrics, I will just, um, let me finish. Okay, so I've sewn all the way across there. Since I already know that um, in a future step, it's going to tell me to repeat everything that I just did for my A and C combination, then you can go ahead and feed those in right now, stitch those across, and then we'll go to the, oops, testing you guys. If I was in class, if you were with me in person, half of you would be yelling at me saying to put the larger fabric on the bottom. And it's still, although the gray one is longer, I still consider the, 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 teal colored fabric, the larger, because it's wider and it's when it's in front of me. Just gonna stitch this quickly. Next, I'm gonna go to the iron and I have specifically instructed you to press away from the A fabric. It's specific for this particular block. So away from the, in my case, the gray. So let's go to the iron. You wanna meet me over there? So here we are at the iron. Um, I wanna press away from the A fabric. And the reason I wanna do that, you'll see in a couple of minutes, it has to do with the technique that we're doing today. I also sewed together what I was talking about earlier, one of the, um, a two and a quarter inch square and a three and a quarter inch rectangle because again the instructions tell us to do it this way so I sewed one together and you would have had to sew um, 12 or something I don't remember exactly how many you would have to sew of these to achieve the same thing that we're doing here and I guess I just want to show you um, how much more efficient the way we're doing it is so I would have to take this and go to the iron for all of these tiny little guys and press each one of those separately instead what we're going to do is take the whole strip both of my strips as a matter of fact to the iron 
I always like to set my seams closed first. Um, it helps me get them nice and flat and lined up on the ironing board and to prepare it for my next step really is, is the reason I like to do it. So I've set my seams closed first. The seam allowance is all pressing this way. Well, if I lift this up a little bit, the seam allowance is still pressing this way, which is away from the, um, the AA fabric, which is what I want. So what I'm gonna do is just lift up a little bit, let the iron sneak in there, and the iron is gonna push all the way to the seam. So just lift a little bit and let the iron push all the way to the seam. Then I take one last shot over this strip. So I'm gonna kind of put a little bit of tension on the far end over here and just press the reason I have a little bit of tension on this end is to make it straight. So you don't want it to be wavy. That's going to kind of come back to you in a couple of minutes. Okay, so one more time. Set it closed. Lift up a little bit and let the iron push the seam all the way extended open. And then one last shot over the whole thing to get it nice and straight and even. And then we can review and look back at the back side and see how the seam allowance has pressed away from what I want it to and perfect and I never need to do any pressing on the other side. We're going to go back to the cutting station and do some subcutting. So now that we have everything pressed really nice and flat, we're going to subcut and the goal that we're going for is a bunch of units that look like this. So again, I just feel like the strip piecing method is a little bit more efficient for what we're doing. Um, I need to clean off this edge here first. I'm going to take my ruler and I always tell you guys that the good stuff should be under the ruler. So the stuff over here is the good stuff. The stuff over here isn't the good stuff. So I don't need that under the ruler. I want the good stuff protected by the ruler. So I'm going to line up any one of the horizontal lines on my ruler. Um, and it can be a, a, a number of different rulers that you're using here. We just need it to be really long enough to be able to make the cut that we need. And I like the width being a little bit wider so that I can make sure my ruler is straight with my fabric. So a horizontal line on the ruler lined up on the seam. And then I'm going to just trim off a little bit here. And I'm pretty confident that once I make that trim, that will be a nice square edge. So I'm going to just trim off a little bit here. And then I need to turn my fabric around the other way to do my sub cutting. So some of you have maybe seen a tutorial or something where instead, let me get this off, instead of turning your fabric around, they have you just square off the fabric <laughs> from this side. We have a visitor. Do you want to say hi? <laughs> this is what happens when you're filming at home. So um, sometimes you may have seen somebody do the squaring up like this. Well, I have no idea if that piece of fabric that cut is going to be square because I really have nothing to gauge over here. So then what they end up doing is lining the fabric up with lines on the mat and then it makes it, you can't see where the seam lines up with the lines on the mat. So I don't really trust that method. I much prefer to start on one side and then turn the fabric around and do my cutting that way. So I hope that makes sense. If you have questions about that, I hope you'll let me know. The next thing that I need to do is my sub cutting. So I'm never, to, to kind of back up a little bit, I'm never using the lines on my mat as any sort of um, measuring device or anything. I, I intentionally try to put my fabric a little bit on an angle so that you can't um, be distracted by the lines. My subcuts need to be two and a quarter inches wide. So I, again, the good stuff is going to be underneath the ruler. So the good stuff needs to measure two and a quarter inches wide. So two things are happening. One is I'm lining the horizontal line up on the ruler with the seam line. And then the second thing that I'm doing is finding where two and a quarter inches lines up with the edge of my fabric. Okay. So that again, leaves me confidence that this right here is square to the edges of the fabric, all right? So I'm gonna make that cut, and I need to do this several times. So two and a quarter and that horizontal line, and it doesn't matter which horizontal line you use, but I do like it to line up on the seam and not worry quite as much about what's happening on the outer edges. We're doing several of these cuts, and what may tend to happen as you get going is you may find that the line here at two and a quarter and the line here that's horizontal start to no longer um, coincide with each other. 
they may just not jive and that's okay that's totally okay it's probably just means either your fabric um, maybe got a little wavy when you were pressing or maybe the ruler slid ever so slightly when you were trimming or um, just you know just the markings got you or whatever so it's okay that happens pretty normally especially when we do a longer seam so what you would just want to do is turn your fabric back around squared up again and we've got enough room here to trim a little bit and then you would just shave a little bit off and continue on it's totally okay to have to do that um, every once in a while okay so you're going to continue on until you have um, eight of these guys and you'll repeat the same process with the other color combination so start on the one edge square up a little bit all I'm really focusing on right now is the horizontal line matched up with the seam and shave off a little bit spin it around and cut your two and a quarter inch unit so let's go ahead and get that done and we'll meet back to sew these babies together in just a moment okay so I have eight units of my A and B fabric trimmed together and a bunch of leftovers that I'll just set aside and then I <clears throat> excuse me only needed four of the other colorway because there's less of those and I had a bunch left over of that okay so the next thing that you're going to do is take these units and re-sew them together matching up the outer edges and what that also means is that the um, seams will not match up so I like to call these excuse me I like to call these a four patch because there's four units but they're um, the seam won't match up in the middle because they're not all even squares. So we're just going to take these guys, sew them right sides together with a matching color combination. So we'll do two pairs here and then these will sew to each other. So go ahead and get sewing on all of those units and let's meet back when they're all done. So I would like for you to have all of your units that you've sewn all strung together on the ironing board. I'm just showing you two for now, but what you should do is take the whole string of your units to the ironing board in one big section, and that way you can just iron them efficiently. Again, I just have the two here to show you, but I think you understand because I show you that every time. So set your seam closed. <coughs> Excuse me. And then my instructions say again to press away from the um, A fabric, but that's a little bit tricky to do when you have A fabric on both sides. So this is how we're going to do it. We're going to do everything the way we normally do. Lift up a little bit, let the iron push the rest of the way, set it closed, let the iron lift it up the rest of the way. But then one unique thing that I only save for special occasions is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the back side and make just a tiny snip in my fabric. Try not to go all the way through the seam, although that's going to get sewn and trimmed off momentarily. Um, just make a little snip in the fabric and then that way it allows us to just take that one last shot over with the iron. So very, very rarely do I go to the back side of my fabric whoops, to press and this is, sorry, this is that instance, okay? And it'll be a little bit clearer in a moment as to why we need to take the time to do this. But um, I'll tell you right now, we need that we need that seam to be exposed here, and we need it to be nice and flat, and no extra bulk in the seam there. So that is why we're doing that. Let's um, let me show you the next step. So um, oh. The next step is to use the cat's cradle ruler. I've shown this one to you guys before on video, so um, you can also refer back to that one. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to next sew these into units, and we, we're kind of going for a seam like that. We're kind of looking for a, um, a unit that looks like this. So I need to figure out where that seam needs to happen. When we've done half square triangles in the past, half square triangles are really easy because you just go corner to corner but this isn't a square this is a rectangle and um, I don't have the ability to just to go corner to corner the other thing that I have is this extra element going on here which is a, a seam so my goal is to make that seam here that square be a really perfect point for our process. So I need to make sure that I stitch perfectly across there. But right now I have no idea where that's supposed to be and that's what the ruler is gonna help me with. 
So we're going to work from the back side. We're going to use the cat's cradle template and you'll notice on one end of the ruler it says mark sewing line. So this is the side that we want to focus on right now where it says mark the sewing line. So that needs to be in this, excuse me, general vicinity right here. So let's start with that. I'm going to kind of get it into that general vicinity. Now the next thing I know, and I'm going to turn the ruler back around so you can see, the next thing I know is that I need to have the place on seam lines. Can you see where it says place on seam line? Those believe it or not, need to go on the seam lines. I'm not sure that this ruler could have been designed any better because I, it's really pretty clear. So those are going to go on my seam lines, which are right here. And um, sorry, I'm, I'm all flustered for a second. So the, <laughs> the place on seam line goes on the seam lines and the mark, the sewing line is right here. So the edge of the ruler drives right through where my seams intersect. Where these seams intersect here, that ruler lines right up with it. So my line that I'm actually going to draw will be my seam line, my sewing line, and it's going to go right here. I'm using my chuckle liner to do this. There are certainly other methods that you can use to mark that line. Um, I love the chuckle liner because it comes on to my fabric really easily and it doesn't distort the fabric as I, as I mark. And it's a thin line. Some, some marking tools mark a really thick line and I, and I need the accuracy of the thinner line. So I've marked my sewing line there. I need to turn my fabric around because I can't just say, okay, there's my line and then stitch a quarter of an inch away. This is the actual sewing line, not the guide line. So again, I will line the ruler up. The seam line goes on the seams and I will mark my sewing line here. Uh, I may as well do the other while I'm at it. People often ask me what color choco liner they should get or, or marking tool in general. Um, I would say that if you generally use a lot of the same types of colors of fabric, for example, if you like to use red fabric a lot, then maybe don't get the red choco liner. Um, if you use white fabric a lot, then don't get the white one, or maybe two different colors is good. So the pink seems to work great for me for a lot of things, especially with this quilt since I have a lot of gray. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is going to be my sewing line. What I'm gonna sew to this will be my four by five inch rectangles. So hopefully this guy right here measures four by five. Um, might be, it might feel a little bit different than four by five once you went with those seams on there, but once you kind of play with it a little bit, um, it should, it should line up pretty well. The good news as always is we get to trim in a moment. So, um, if it's slightly off, it's totally okay. Okay, so we're gonna put those right sides together and we're going to sew on the sewing line. I just wanna go back for a second and talk about um, that line that you drew. The goal in the stitching, again, is that when you stitch, your stitching nails it right at that intersection. Okay, so you wanna make sure that the seam happens right through where the other two seams intersect and that's what's gonna help us achieve that nice pointy square in a little bit. If you need to put pins in this to secure it for you, go for it. Um, just know that you're gonna be stitching on the lines. So let's go to the machine and um, sew these babies. Okay, so let's get sewing. Um, I often get asked about how to get started. Um, people say that the thread balls up underneath their machine or fabric gets balled up underneath the machine. I'm in a really just natural habit of kind of just putting a slight amount of tension on the threads over to the side. When you're stitching, there's tension on the thread because it's, in, it's engaged in your fabric. Before you start, there's no tension on this thread. So I just provide a little bit of tension off to the side to keep the thread from getting sucked down into the machine. And the other thing that I like to do is try to make sure that my first stitch happens in the fabric. And that kind of does the same thing, but um, it prevents my fabric from getting sucked down into the machine. So I always like to, to get that first stitch to happen in fabric if I can help it. And then I should be good to go. So I don't really have the issue of it all getting sucked down into the machine. So when I'm stitching along, I'm stitching on that marked line that I 
drew, obviously. Once I get to about here, I'm about an inch away from where this intersection happens, I kind of divert my eye from the marked line to the actual uh, threads that I've stitched to make sure that I nail it, to make sure that I hit right over that seam. And then once I'm done with that, I can get back on track to my marked line. You'll have all of yours hopefully prepared before you get started. So go ahead and just get the next one ready and sneak it into the machine. Again, here where I'm, my fabric is pretty susceptible to get, wanting to get pulled down into the machine, the great thing is it's, it's kind of protected by what I've already stitched. So there's tension on the thread and there's tension on the fabric. So it, it should shield that fabric from getting sucked down into your machine when you're, when you're chain piecing. Okay, so here's my next one. I'm just gonna kind of divert my eye to make sure that it pierces through the, um, the seam and then I'll continue on and stitch the rest like that. So go ahead and stitch all of yours and then we'll meet back when we're done. Okay, so you'll have four units that look like this, two units that look like this. And the next thing that we need to do is cut these apart. Um, I like to take the efficiency route, and by that I mean cut this just in half-ish. The instructions for the ruler tell you to take a different route, which is to line up the seam line with the quarter inch marking on your ruler and cut there, and then turn it around and repeat from the other side so you eliminate a little bit in the middle. Um, for some reason, this one's a little bit beefier than usual, but think about half of that. Let me show you what half of that looks like. Um, being ex in addition on either side of your seam. So you'd have about an eighth of an inch of extra bulk in each seam, which if you don't want to have that, and I challenge you when you see my finish block to see if you can even tell that there's a difference, um, but you're more than welcome to take the route that you want. So I just like to cut it once in half, and then I'm gonna be trimming in a moment. Um, we're gonna to go to the iron and press, and hopefully it's logical to you that we're gonna press this way. And the reason it's logical to press this way is because if you were to look at all that bulk, it wants to go in that direction. So I'm gonna to go to the iron and press real quick, and then we'll trim. Okay, so they're pressed in the direction that I need them to be. Now we need to trim. This is the magic step and we're gonna utilize the cat's cradle tool again. Uh, maybe it's clear. Can you see it okay on the contrast there? Let's see if this looks a little bit better. Okay, so we're going to trim um, actually with this section of the ruler. We marked the lines over here, but now we're trimming. So if you can use the knowledge that I've taught you about trimming, um, half square triangles. We always use the diagonal line on the ruler to trim. And um, there is a diagonal line on the ruler and there's also a diagonal seam that we're going to line up. The difference is in our half square triangles today, the there's extra stuff going on and we really wanna focus on that being in the middle. So we have a diagonal line on our seam, we have a diagonal line on our ruler, several as a matter of fact, because this ruler trims to several sizes. And then we have a square down at the end to um, help us know where our square needs to sit. So I'm gonna turn the ruler this way. Now, the size that we're trimming to and the size that we're sewing our blocks, I should say, is a three inch finished size. And when I say three inch finished, I mean when it's done, when the quilt is done and all the seams are in place, those units will measure three inches. When they're trimmed and they're not sewn and they're ready to go into your block, they'll have seam allowances on there and they'll measure three and a half, but the finished size is three inches. So the way the trim to size works is we're gonna focus on that three inch marking there. Um, so I will show you what that looks like. The three inch right there is the three inch marking. So two things are happening. The, the square lines that line up should be right on the square that I stitched and the diagonal line on the ruler lines up right on my seam. So it's just like any other half square triangle unit that we've ever done where we got that diagonal line to keep us in check, but the but the, the square lines there help us know where on that diagonal line we need to live, okay? So it's gonna sit right here and I will trim 
these two sides, which usually when we're doing half square triangles, we're trimming um, like these two sides, for example. So this one's a little bit different as far as that goes, but we're gonna trim two sides. And then I'm gonna keep the ruler in the same positioning, but spin the fabric around because I have to trim the other two sides. The same diagonal line on the ruler is going to line up on my seam. And hopefully you can utilize some of the knowledge that you have that I've taught you about trimming half square triangles. And let, let's look, I'm gonna take it away for a second. Let's look at the corners. Can you see how in the corners it's really chunky and blunt? Right, you have the diagonal line, but it comes about an eighth to a quarter of an inch off the edge of the, uh, the corner. This is in not what we want. We do not want it to be like this. So we still have to trim two sides. And the way we're gonna do that is line up the diagonal line again on there and then shift down. So now you know that at least in the corners, you wanna have it come nice and sharp to the point there. But the beautiful thing about the ruler is if we look at that three inch marking again, it kisses right where our square is. Okay, so that three inch square marking kisses right where our square actually lives. And then if you even were to track this dotted line down, it should come right to the corner of where we've already trimmed, okay? So I'm gonna trim two sides there. And then that is one completed cat's cradle unit. If we were in person in class right now, I would be saying, do you want me to show you again? And at least one person would say yes. So here we go, we're gonna do it again. Diagonal, except for when we're on camera, you can just rewind. But I find for myself, I think of more things to tell you if I do it twice. So I'm doing it twice, even though you can rewind. So we're gonna put the diagonal line up on the ruler onto our seam, and then we're gonna shimmy the ruler down until that square lines up right with the lines on the ruler square, okay? So there's that, that should line up pretty well there. And we're gonna trim two sides. And then I will um, lift the ruler, rotate my fabric and turn it around to trim the other two sides. So that three inch marking lines up, the ruler lines up on the lines and we trim the other two sides. I will mention that I definitely appreciate using the smaller rotary cutting ruler when I'm doing these smaller cuts. Um, it's just a little bit easier to man maneuver in the smaller spaces and um, you know when your hands gotta get up in there. So let's just take a double checker in the corner here. If you notice the diagonal line of my square comes right to the point and that's, that's what we always want when we have a 45 degree angle, okay? So the last step that I'm gonna show you before you put your block together is um, an extra step that we didn't do in the last time I showed you the Cat's Cradle template. And I have to apologize because earlier when I talked about the squares that you're going to use for um, the final step, I, I think I said two and a half and these actually need to be cut two inches. Your handout says two inches, um, but I just misspoke when I was um, when I was talking earlier. Okay, so the two inch square is now on the very final step going to go onto the units that you've already trimmed. Um, I'm using the same color fabric as I used for the cat's cradle. Um, if you wanted to change it up, you're more than welcome to do that. But what we're gonna do, again, you've already trimmed this. I know in the past, sometimes I've taught this and maybe you forgot to trim first and then put the unit on, but we, we trim first, then put this on. So the two inch square is gonna go right onto the outer corner. It's not, we're not worrying about where the seam lives, we're just worried about the outer edge. So all you're gonna do is line up the, uh, the raw edge of what you've trimmed in your cat's cradle to the raw edge here. We're gonna stitch on the diagonal. So what you're going to do is line up your ruler corner to corner with the square. It's a little tricky to see because there's no contrast there. So corner to corner with your square, draw that line, and that's actually going to be your stitching line. Okay, I'm gonna do it one more time. <coughs> Excuse me, so I can show you again. It might be actually easier to mark the line before you've actually put it onto your unit. No, nothing underneath there to distort you. Okay, so I will put this on here. And what did I do wrong? Oh, this one's not trimmed yet. <laughs> Sorry. So this is my trimmed one. That's what you don't want to do. So this one is untrimmed and it would nestle right in there. No, this is not what we want. See, I planned that for you guys. Thanks. So untrimmed versus trimmed. This is the trimmed one. It should fit on there like that. 
we're going to stitch right across the line and then we're pretty much done. I've got some actually under the machine right now that I'm stitching so I'll just continue on like that. I'm just going to feed this baby in. You want to be pretty careful about where the stitching happens here. You don't want it to be too far off that edge or else it makes it look a little bit funny when you uh, when you um, when you're done when you trim it. Okay, so you're just going to stitch them right on the seam. I mean, right on the drawn line. And then when you're done, all you need to do is like I have my nice long string of these babies all ready to go. You're just going to trim off about to leave about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So you're just going to take your ruler. It doesn't need to be incredibly accurate. Um, so you can just take your ruler, line it up about on that quarter inch line and um, press open. And this is what you have. That's what we made. So this right here should live a quarter of an inch from the edge of your fabric. And that way, when we do our stitching to sew our block together, we're going to come right to that point there and get a nice sharp edge. Okay, so this is all done and, and encased in there now. So what you need to have in order to construct your finished block is four of these, eight of these, same thing, just different color combination, and then four of your little cornerstone units. Um, so, and you're more than welcome as always to rearrange your layout and come up with something different, but the goal today was to teach you the uh, cat's cradle with that extra bonus triangle on the end. So thank you for watching and um, I look forward to seeing you soon.